I was born in Los Angeles. I grew up in West LA in Brentwood. I don't know if you guys know where that is at all. You heard of Barrington? Yeah. So I grew up in North Barrington. Uh, my next door neighbors were all the stars. You know, I had John Densmore of the drums. John Densmore of the drums. John Densmore of the doors. Excellent. I was going to see who got it. John Densmore of the Doors lived next door. Uh, Dustin Hoffman lived behind our house. Mel Brooks's partner was on the other side of our house. And they, they actually had a pending $70,000 lawsuit on the decibel noise coming out of our house. Because my brothers and I grew up in a home that our parents, our parents were, especially my father, they were all about like, like giving us as much possible freedom as they could ever give a person. And that included financial freedom, and there were absolutely no rules. And they just let us go wild. So we were like the boys that your parents wouldn't let you play with. And I think I was voted in high school like most likely to be dead or in jail. Okay, we we were wild, wild, wild kids, and we had uh, we had massive parties all the time. I still to this day, it's now I'm out of high school. I don't even know how many years, 25, 30 years. I still meet people who are at our parties who I've never met in my life, but they're like, "You're Glazer, whoa!" <laughs> like. I was at a party at your house. And the funny thing is, I haven't stopped. I met someone in New York just now uh, on, over the Sabbath, like yesterday. I met someone in New York who was at my sukkah party la two weeks ago, which is a full, you know, it's got like full strobe and black light psychedelic type things going on with, uh, it's got a very big sound system and keg beer and live band in my sukkah. And th this guy says he just thought it was some kind of dance party. So he's in there dancing away and dancing away. And he had no idea it was my sukkah at all. He never, like, he never got to the host. And the, um, so people ask me sometimes, why do you throw such big sukkah parties? Why do you do it and night after night? Every night, there's another raging party in my sukkah. So people ask me, like, why are you throwing these parties? And so I answer them that because God's watching. <laughs> I'm like, God's watching everybody, but no one else is doing these kinds of parties. And I said, yeah, but God saw my parties before. He saw those parties when it was about me. And now that we're commanded to party, so I'm not going to throw a party. Like now is, I have to do it. And there are some nights where I'm like, finish. I don't want to throw another party. But I'm just like, I'm going. And the truth is, this year I was ready to party every night. It was great. Yeah, we had a really good time. You just should have seen my credit card bill at the end of the week. It was awful. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I'll be lucky to work that thing off by Hanukkah, you know, which is cool, because my name's Yom Tov, and holidays are my thing. And, you know, <laughs> happy to foot the bill. I put on Facebook, like, $500 sponsorships, but that, like, barely covered the booze. You know, there were, like, four or five course meals coming out at all times. We have chefs working on it, and it's, a, it's amazing. And next time you're in, in Jerusalem for Sukkot, I invite you all. Anyway, even uh, all at the same time. And um, anyway, so I grew up here in West LA, and I eventually went to University of California in Santa Barbara, UCSB, or you can study buzz. And I uh, graduated there in the fifth year when they finally said, like, you got to leave. And I went off a week later to Jerusalem. I've been studying in Jerusalem now for 23 years. I actually got there at 23, and now I've been studying there for 23. So I just told you how old I am. But, uh, but I literally half my life was California, surfing and partying and uh, relating to people. And the other half of my life has been uh, the same exact thing, only swimming in wisdom. Um, people ask me sometimes, what a, what a radical shift in lifestyle. Like, it, it seems radical, doesn't it? a radical shift in lifestyle, but in fact, there's nothing radical about the shift in lifestyle. If you actually count the things I love to do, they're the same things that I did before, right? So look at the things I love to do. I love to surf, I love to mountain bike. I've been mountain biking uh, for many, many years around the world. I'm really into mountain biking. I just actually did 2,000 vertical feet in four days in uh, the Swiss Alps uh, about five weeks ago. And I'm, I'm constantly on the on the search for the ultimate trail, and uh, also surfing around the world. So I love mountain biking. I love surfing. I love um, beer and single malt whiskey. 
Um, I love uh, burritos. And tonight's probably going to be Mexi kosher, but we'll see. Uh, it's hard to hold me back from Mexi kosher when I'm finally back here. You know, the only kosher, authentic Mexican food on earth. And uh, and the uh, there's plenty of Mexican food restaurants, but that's the only real one here. And then um, the other thing I love uh, I love girls, and I'm married to one, so that's amazing. And uh, and I love uh, I love music crazy about music, and uh, both playing and listening. And, uh, and I, love, I love wisdom. I love all, all those. Now, if you look at those seven things, let's go through them again, OK? Surfing, kosher or not kosher? Everyone say. Kosher. kosher. Mountain biking? Kosher. Beer? Kosher. Whiskey? Kosher. Kosher, OK. Um, what was the next one? Girls, if you're married to one, kosher, OK? Um, then you got um, uh, music, kosher, right? And then what was the last one I mentioned? Wisdom. Well, it depends what you get yourself into, but, but certainly Torah wisdom is kosher. So exactly where is the shift? Where is the shift? The only thing I've added to my life is the depth of the wisdom. That's it just going into the endless, endless pool of Torah. Now, you guys are probably looking at me like I know a lot more Torah than you do, and maybe Rabbi Lando also knows a lot more Torah than you do. It may be the case, but the truth is we're all equal when it comes to Torah. We're totally equal. Don't ever think I'm like somewhere beyond you in Torah. And you're probably wondering, like, what? Like, how can you be where I am in Torah? And I learned this actually from my brother Sam, actually, who uh, I forget who you heard it from. But they said that uh, if you put an Olympic swimmer, imagine you swimming against uh, one of the top. Who's, that, who's the pot smoking, like, number one swimmer? Phelps, Phelps yeah. 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 <laughs> he does inhale, OK? So uh, Michael Phelps, um, imagine you racing Michael Phelps in a 100-yard you know, pool. Who's going to win? Yeah, <laughs> who's going to win against Phelps? Is he high? <laughs> <laughs> He's really high. <laughs> and now, what about both lengths? Yeah. He's going to win. And for most of us, by the time we dove in the water, he's going to be on the other side of the pool. Yeah. OK, you ready for the next, the next race I'm going to give you against him? We're going to drop both of you in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Who wins? <laughs> no, the boat's taken off. Who wins? None of, us. None of us. And that is Torah. That's Torah. And that's why we're in the same place. Because Torah is endlessly, endlessly greater and bigger than the Pacific Ocean. And we both know that you and I are equal swimmers when it comes to being dropped in the center of the Pacific Ocean. We're equal swimmers. I mean, I may live a little longer just as a surfer. I might make it for another few minutes. And maybe Phelps would make it another hour than you. But that's it. The, t the Torah is like the sea, and it's an endless sea. And I've been studying it now 23 years, and now I certainly am convinced that I know nothing. <laughs> but it's one of the most beautiful things, because normally we try to achieve something. You know, you work your way, and you work your way, and you work your way up, and you work your way up. And then you finally achieve it, and then you work your way down. And you guys studied economics, the law of uh, diminishing, uh, uh, what is it called, the uh, diminishing? Deterrence. Deterrence? Returns, yeah, law of diminishing returns. So there you achieve it, and then you deal with the law of diminishing returns. When it comes to Torah, you strive, and you strive, and you strive, and you strive, but you never achieve. You never achieve it. And it's awesome. It's amazing. You can just go and go and go into its wisdom, and you'll never, ever get there. And I'll tell you something else. When you call me rabbi, I'm embarrassed, because I have a rabbi who you should not call me. If you knew my rabbi, you wouldn't be calling me rabbi. You'd be calling me Yom Tov. Okay? He's the rabbi. But the funny thing is, whenever we call him rabbi, he's like, he's like, I'm so embarrassed you're calling me. If you only knew my rabbi. And his rabbi said, if you only knew my rabbi, you'd know not to call me rabbi. And his rabbi said, if you only knew my rabbi. And so it's just an endless, endless pool. Yeah? Oh, his name is Rabbi Shalom Friedman. He's from Denver, Colorado. What? No, no. He's, uh, 
He's kind of part of no institution. He's a pretty reclusive uh, guy. Um, he sleeps two hours a day, except for Thursdays and Fridays, where he doesn't sleep at all. Um, he only eats what keeps him alive. And he lives in the moment only. There's nothing but this moment. And he won't even let you take a picture of him, because he says, why are you freezing the moment? <laughs> he lives in the moment. Eventually, they had to take him to a doctor, because they, he wasn't staying healthy. You know, and he's six foot five. They brought him to the doctor because he was getting weak, and the doctor asked, what do you eat? He says, two slices of white bread. And the doctor's like, what? How's that going to keep you alive? And, and he says, oh, that's what I have to eat. He says, why? He says, have you ever seen how many ingredients are involved in white bread? And the doctor's like, yeah. He says, I'm raising up probably every country on Earth because those ingredients come from all over the planet, and I'm raising up the planet when I eat my, that bread. And the rabbis, the doctor's like, you're going to die. You know, and he's like, well, what do I do? He says, you need to eat whole wheat bread. <laughs> and so now he eats two slices of whole wheat bread. You know, this, anyway, this is my teacher, you know, Rabbi Shalom Friedman. He's way out there, way out there. And he's like, and he doesn't like students very much. You know, he's like, he's like, I once asked him, Rabbi, can't you teach another class like during the week? We'd like to come other than just this one night. He says, what makes you think I'm teaching a class tonight? <laughs> the whole class is there, and we're like, what do you mean? <laughs> he says, well, nor normally I'm studying quietly. Tonight I'm studying out loud. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. It's like he's the bug repellent, and we're the bug. And very few people stick with him. I'm with him now 20 years, we're with him 20 years now. And there has never been more than 10 students at any given time. Because he just, he's like, just, he's like centrifugal. Like, you know what I mean? He's like spinning around and he just shoots you out. Shoots you out. And I, I'm one of the few people who's had the tenacity to, to hang in with him. And really, really something. Yeah. OK. Um, anyway, so I grew up there and um, in West LA, went to Santa Barbara. And then I got to Jerusalem, been studying many years there. Met my wife in the first year at a party. Uh, thought she was super cool and wanted to date her whenever I'd be ready to date. We kind of take our time in Jerusalem to date. So I didn't date for the first three years. I just studied and focused, studied and focused. When I was finally ready to date, I said, that's the one I want to date first. We never even got to date. I called her out to ask her out. We, we spoke for three hours on the phone. Are you going to, you take them to Tzfat? And they're going to go to Tzfat? Yeah, you guys are going to go to this super holy spiritual place called Tzfat. And uh, she was teaching in a seminary in Svat, a women's yeshiva. And I called her up to ask her out. We spoke for three hours, and we were engaged by the end of the conversation. So I never dated her. And that was it. And we're married 20 years. We just had our 20-year anniversary, which is really amazing. And we have eight kids, thank God. And, uh, and uh, my oldest daughter just got married. She's in her first year of university. And she's like, uh, you know, about to give birth. You know, can you imagine giving birth in your first year of university? Yeah, that's pretty out there. But in Jerusalem, that's considered totally normal you know, to be married and pregnant in your freshman year. So <laughs> we do things a little differently over there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so, so things are rocking over there. I'm getting, kind of getting ready to be a grandpa. And uh, can you imagine me being a grandpa? <laughs> OK, kid, just hold on to the front of that surfboard there. Uh, grandpa's going to take care of you. Anyway, I started a company about 13 years ago. I run a company that's uh, run uh, here in uh, the US, uh, New York. I'm in New York all the time. And um, I also run it in uh, Jerusalem mainly. And I'm launching in Toronto in about three weeks. I'm launching my course in Toronto. It's a seminar company. Uh, you guys ever done any seminars in personal development, personal growth? You guys ever done that kind of thing? You did some? Very nice. How was it? That kind of thing, very good. So I'm like the Jewish Tony Robbins. Yeah, yeah. So, so which is amazing because it gives access to Jews who just don't want to like put their brain, you know, in someone else's hands, just because you don't know where they're taking you. A Jewish brain is like real estate. It's like real estate. It's a Jewish brain. That's your real estate. That doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, you're not just selling off parcels for a buck. 
Yeah, the Jewish brain needs to be focused and it's careful what it takes in. That's why the, the, the scariest thing is the, the web, because it just, you know, it's just coming, you know, and television. And no one's asking you any questions, you know, you're just clicking around and boom, 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 next, you come out of there, you need a mikvah. So, so the, uh, but when you start looking at your Jewish mind as, a, as, a, as real estate, it's real estate. What, what kind of parcels are you willing to give up? Of your, of your mind. And it, it's really something. I, myself on Facebook, I got thousands of friends on Facebook, so, so I can read down the posts and feel totally adulterated by the end of the, the uh, you know, 15 minutes just looking at what people are posting can really be like, you know what I'm saying, that feeling? Like you just saw more than you should have. Yeah? So, so anyway, we gotta protect our real estate. We gotta protect that real estate. You, know, you want to let out a prayer. Out of these lips, you want to let out a prayer. You want to connect to God. You, ultimately, you're really going to be connecting from your mind. It's from the heart, but you know, you're going to be using your mind. But the mind needs space and peace and purity to, to connect with the Almighty. And so, so that's, that's the real estate. Now, when you, put, when you go to these events, you're really putting your life in their hands. Because if you want to grow, you can't, you're never going to grow in personal growth seminars. You're never going to grow staying uh, defensive. Right? I don't know if you let yourself go in there. Everyone did. Everyone did. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so if it's really the right seminar, it, it kind of, without you knowing it, it, let, it makes your guard go down. Mine does as well. So, so the, um, but it's nice to have someone running a seminar like that where you know it's going to stay kosher for your mind and for your heart and for your life. You get that? Like it's going to be... It's going to be like that. And it's also not going to be all open-ended. It's going to be like, you know, let's get something really positive flowing at the end. Because in the end, it's got to be something super positive and righteous and good for the greater good of humanity as well. Yeah. No selfishness. OK, so I've been running that company for 13 years. And it's been really, really amazing. It's growing and growing and growing, launching all over. And, uh, and if you guys are ever visiting, I, I also get, I get Russians from like Sheep's Head Bay and Brighton Beach and stuff, they'll come into the seminar. It's really been a lot of fun. And I would say my Russian students have been some of the greatest. And there's a famous guy, a Russian student of mine named uh, Stephen Asnes. You guys ever heard of Stephen Asnes? Any guys? Yeah, he's very well known on the East Coast. And he's been kind of a uh, big, big uh, sport with my work. OK, that's it for my background. Uh, now I'd like to teach you a little bit. But any questions in the meantime? Any other questions? I'm just a little curious about, um, I mean, you run these seminars, right? But there's only one of you, and you've got them on, in multiple locations. I've been traveling a lot. So you're, you're the one who does every single one of them. You don't have other I've trained people. two people to do it. One of them sitting about four seats from you. It's my brother Sam. I know that sounds a little nepotistic that one of the two other people trained is my brother. Uh, so he's been trained to do it. And, uh, and please, God, <laughs> we're in high-level discussions right now on our, our work. And, uh, and there's a woman from uh, Israel, a really a fabulous, amazing story. Who, she's, she was actually a Christian and, uh, and an evangelical Christian who was born Jewish. She's actually Jewish. And she, uh, she uh, in her whole process during her time of being a Christian, she had at one point become a, an obese 450 pound wheelchair bound situation. Uh, really, really bad. And through this work, she is now like a lean, mean, personal growth public speaker. And uh, yeah, someone really, really special. And she's been working with me for many years now. And so I'm not the only one. Thank you. I'm not the only one. Yeah, anyone else? Uh, any other questions? OK, so let's learn a little something. Um, I think what I'd like to do with you guys, um, teach you a little bit of Kabbalah. Right, would you guys like to learn some Kabbalah? That's been my emphasis. You heard who my rabbi is. You might as well you know, get a little taste of the Kabbalah. But I've got a, a way for you to access the Kabbalah in a, in a very sweet way, that you'll understand it right away. Now, what we learn is this being called oneness, you know, God is absolute oneness. This being that's absolutely one creates a world of multiplicity. There's many chairs in the room, many tables in the room, many people in the room, many protons, neutrons, electrons, many molecules. This, the world's made of the multiple. 
Yet it's all coming from oneness. We're being beamed from oneness, a unified field. For those who know a little physics, it's called the unified field theory. Yeah, you've heard of that? So even in physics, they know it. We're being beamed from absolutely unifi unification, from oneness. And that oneness is coming into, into physicality, which is made of you know, great, massive amounts of facets to it. How does that oneness become many? How does it become the many? How does it become the physical world? How does the oneness become a physical world? How does God's light, how does light energy become matter, is really the question. And so the answer is, is that light energy becomes matter via ten, um, ten spheros. They're called the ten spheros, so that's something you want to get wired for those getting tested on your stuff. Okay, there's ten spheros, otherwise known like ten beams that God's creating the world with. Now this is fascinating because it's a major claim. I mean, for the Kabbalists to come tell us, with all of our science background, that the world's made of 10 major beams. Like the whole world, everything you look at will always be made of these 10 things, and they've been saying this for thousands of years. So that's a big claim. And I'd like to show you how all 10 are happening right now, all around you. And once you know these 10, you have the key to everything. Because from now on, you can see the face of God in everything you look at. A little background, why would I call it the face of God? And the answer is, is because God doesn't have a face. God isn't made of anything. It has absolutely no image at all. Have you ever noticed in the Torah that it says that we're created, human beings are created in the image of God? And yet at the same time, one of the 13 principles of Judaism is God has no image. So it's like, if you tell us we're in the image of God and God has no image, what's going on here? And so the answer is, is we are made in the image of how God creates creation, i.e. those ten ways. God creates the world in ten ways, and we're made of those ten ways. And in fact, your very body has a representation of each of those ways. And this gets even into ancient Chinese medicine. But we are made of all those ten ways. Three up here, three intellects. You have your associative mind. Maybe I should be pointing this way. That's your right, right? Yeah, because for me, it's my right brain, but I'll go over here. You have your associative mind. You have your analytical mind, your left brain. And then you have something that probably, no offense, few of you have. I certainly have none of it. And that is, a, a, meaning we all have it, but it's, it's hard to, very few people, one in 50 have it strong. It's called the decisive mind. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the decisive mind. So we can have associative thinking. We can think like, for example, I, I, I feel like dairy, okay? But then you have an analytical mind. Well, do I want cheese? Do I want ice cream? Do I want a coffee? Do I want um, a glass of milk? Do I want a slice of pizza? Okay, that's all the analytical mind. And then there's the decisive mind. No, I want yogurt. Yeah, and that's your decisive mind. Has anything happened yet? Is there a yogurt anywhere at this point? No. It's all intellectual, and it's called the, th there's three hidden, seven revealed. Okay, so how many are there all together? Say it. Ten. Ten. What are they called? Spheros. Say Spheros. Spheros. Is anyone of the Sephardic traditions? Spheros. Spheros. Excellent. Spheros. <laughs> so if you're of the Sephardic tradition, your job is to say Spheros. How many, uh, maybe I'll do it. I see quite a few people. What are, they, what are you guys, Bukharian or something? Or one of the stands. Oh, we have Persians here? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. No, I grew up in a Persian household. Exactly. I don't look Persian. You're from Valley, you know Persian. Yeah. Yeah, well they came a little later to Brentwood, but uh, but I I I grew up in a Persian household. I was I was uh I didn't grow up in a Persian household. You didn't I know, that's my brother. I grew up in a Persian household. My best friend was Persian. The uh, the ten spheros have start with three hidden Okay, how many spheros? Ten. 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 Three are hidden, okay? Three hidden. They are called Chochmah, Bina, and Das. You've heard of Chabad? They name their movement after those three. Chochmah, Bina, Das. Okay, what's Chochmah? The associative brain. Say Chochmah. Chochmah. The associative mind. That's your brainstorming mind. That's your genius mind. That's your pro problem-solving mind. That's called Chochmah. Chochmah. Okay, then there's Bina. Bina is your analytical mind. 
Okay, that's your left brain, Bina. Bina, analytical mind. And then the third one is called Das, or if you're Sephardi, Da'at. Yeah, Da'at. And that's, everyone say Das, or Da'at. Da'at. We're going Sephardi now. Da'at. Okay? And Da'at is the decisive mind. And again, one in 50 people, that's their main, that's where they sit. And they're usually like CEOs or heads of companies and stuff who can like call the shots right there. Boom, that's what we're doing. Yeah, they're very special people are like that. And those are the type of people you should be seeking advice from. Yeah, if you're ever feeling like stuck and you're indecisive, you always seek advice. Yeah, the only way up Mount Everest is with a guide. And life's a lot harder to climb than Mount Everest. You find someone who has strong dot and you always bounce your situations, whether they're financial, emotional, friendships, relationships, associates. You, you, always, um, you always bounce your stuff off da'at people. You'll, have, you'll go very far that way. Okay, now, the seven revealed. Okay, you ready? The seven revealed begins with one called chesed. Try the word chesed. 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 Now, let's see if anyone knows what chesed means. What's chesed mean? Kindness. Kindness. I knew you were going to say that. It was a trick question. So we actually use the word chesed for kindness. Acts of loving kindness are called, you know, chesed or gimilut chasadim, yeah? But in Kabbalah, the word chesed does not mean kindness. In fact, it's one of the most destructive of all attributes. And the word chesed means unbridled flow, okay? So let's just say it means flow, okay? What's chesed mean? Flow. flow. So, for example, the ocean is chesed. The water in my cup is chesed, okay? Why is it destructive? Because if you have pure chesed, so, you know, it's just gonna, it's gonna blow, blow everything over, you know, a tsunami's chesed, okay? The Torah actually used the word chesed for incest. You know, the Torah has a list of forbidden relationships. You know, it's a long list, 37 mitzvahs of thou shalt not with your, uh, you know what's. Yeah? So it's the 37. You want to hear it in a rap? Yeah? yeah? Okay, sorry about the, instead of boss, I say boss instead of bot. Okay? Bot means daughter. Bot, bot would be your granddaughter. These are all forbidden relationships. Obviously, we don't need to know that. Everyone knows that's sicko. Yeah? The only reason the Torah puts it is just so you're extra busted because it says so. I mean, you understand? <laughs> you're busted even if you've never read the Torah. But that the Torah wrote it means you're just, you're totally busted. Okay, here we go. You ready? You don't even know what I'm saying. Right? I'll do it anyway. Eshazab, for example, is your father's sister. Sorry, your father's wife, meaning not your mom. But if your father remarried, that's on the list of like the big no-nos. Okay, these are all huge no-nos. Ready? Aim, Aim's mother, obviously. It's a huge no-no. Aim, Eshazab, Achos, Bas, Eshazab. Bas, Ben, Bas, Bas, Bas. Uvitao, Bas, Vitao, Bas, Vina. Achos, Av, Achos, Aim. Eshaz, Achayav. Eshaz, Ben, Eshaz, Ach. Achos, Ishto. Imbeima, Alea, Zacha, Av, Achayav. Eshaz, Nida, Goim. Amuni, Mitzri, Edomi. Mumza saris lisa res amana amana gurusha amana nisua gurusha zona halalav ye krav. Thirty-seven commandments right there. We have them all in a wrap. All six thirteen. We have them in a wrap. No, would you like one? Yeah. So, what? Six hundred thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Idolatry has fifty-one. Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, we're, we're like, we're to, where I study in, in your, Jerusalem is called Asha Torah, and it's super like anti religious. So, so that's why we memorize all the commandments, because like, if, you, if you don't know what you're doing, that means you're religious. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're just religious. Why are you in these classes? We don't want you to be religious Jews. We want you to know what you're doing. We want you to be literate. Okay? This isn't about being religious. It's about being literate. We want you to be as literate as possible. We're not into religion. Judaism's not into religion. Yeah, we've suffered so badly at the hands of religions. So has the whole planet. Yeah, we're not into religion. Okay? And the reason why we, in age we memorize all the commandments is because we, we want to know what we're talking about. We're not just doing stuff because we don't know what we're doing. We want to know what we're doing. We want to understand every command. We want to know them by heart. It's also nice to know them by heart because Jews have suffered so much persecution. If they take away my books, I got it by heart. Can't mess with it. 
Yeah. My brother Sam and I, we've been uh, on this whole thing to memorize the entire prayer book. Because, uh, you know, if they ever took away our prayer books, it's not going to stop praying. You know, they got the prayers by heart. And you can't take it away. Yeah, it's great. So, chesed means flow. <laughs> and our Torah calls incest chesed because it lacks limit, lacks border. Tsunami, chesed. Okay? This water fits into any vessel, but I just pour it on the floor. It's just going to keep going to wherever. It's just going to scatter. Chesed, flow. Now, the next attribute is the attribute of gevura. Everyone say the word gevura. Gevura. Gevura means limitation. So this cup would be chesed or gevura, the cup. Gevura. Everyone say gevura. The water is what? The cup is gevura. Very good. Okay? And the right side, it's actually your right arm, but I'm going to pretend this is my right arm for you guys. That's chesed. Okay? And the left arm is gevura. Okay? And your whole body, you're made in the image of God. You are a walking ten spheres of creation. And if you look at creation, every single thing right now that you could look at is chesed and gevura together. So, for example, this wood here was a tree. It was just a beautiful, round, natural tree. Okay? Chesed. But what happened here came the planer. And they planed it. What's that? Chesed or gevura? It's gevura. It's limiting. Okay? Everything here, these glass windows back here, yeah, over here, that was molten, molten glass. It was just liquid glass. Chesed or gevura? Chesed. But it was put into molds that shaped it into glass windows. What's that? Gevura. Very good. When I drive in Los Angeles, my right foot's very much involved with the attribute of? Chesed. Chesed. Yeah. And our, my poor cameraman has been suffering horribly. <laughs> yeah. Especially in New York, where I rented a, uh, a, must, a red fire engine, red Mustang convertible. And we were just like, Bruh! So I'm a very chesed-oriented driver. And, and of course, then there's the break, which is what attribute? Gevura. Here's a guitar over here. Guitar is an amazing, amazing example of, of chesed and gevura. It's even in tune. So you want to hear chesed? I'm going to change these strings. That's chesed. Sound good? Doesn't sound so good, right? Because what's going on, each string's oscillating completely. See that string oscillating? Okay, see this one? That's oscillating at 120, 120 oscillations per second right there. Sorry, 220 oscillations per second. Okay? Now, when you just let them oscillate, so that's chesed. But what happens? I limit the chesed. Yeah, I limit it and put my fingers here limiting the chesed. Oh, it's out of tune. I have to tune it. So let me tune it so it sounds nice at least. What's this tuner doing right now? It's a whole different really cool thing, and it's, 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 what is it? it's checking out vibration. It doesn't hear the guitar. It's, it's feeling the vibration of the wood to try to get it to the exact frequency because there's nothing but frequency. Your clothing's made of the frequencies. Your skin's made of the frequencies. Everything's made of frequencies. And that's how you know there's a God. Just through physics. Think about it. If everything's made of frequency, that means none of this exists. There's only the creator who admitted these frequencies. There we go. So when I, when I limit the strings now, I'm limiting them. So what's this hand here? Chesed or Gevura? Gevura. What's this hand? It's kind of Chesed, but I'm not playing it like that. That would be Chesed. I'm playing it nicely. So that's because I'm playing, but I'm strumming, um, but I'm pressing and limiting for the sound that you're hearing, okay, which is Gevura. Is that clear, Chesed and Gevura? We got that wired? Very good. Now, the next attribute, so far we already got quite a few. Chachma, say them with me. Chachma. 
associate of mind. Associate of mind. Bina, Bina. analytical mind. Dot. Dot. Okay, the decisive mind. Okay, then chesed. Okay, that's flow. Okay, gavura. Limitation. Okay, that's gavura, limitation. And that's the left arm. Okay, now the next is the chest area. And that's called tiferet. Try the word tiferet. Tiferet. And tiferet means beauty. This isn't a big gulp cup. Have you ever seen a big gulp cup, like from 7-Eleven? It's a waste of water, and I'd be running in and out of the bathroom this whole class. Yeah? It's a waste of water. We don't need that much water. The size cup, someone thought it out. They said, okay, let's make this size. They don't have to come back for seconds so quickly. The other hand, they're not going to get too much that, you know, the whole party's going to run out of drink because everyone fills their cups too much water. There's a beauty to the chesed and the gavura, like the, meaning it's telling how much gavura so that people pour proper amounts for that kind of party. If it were a keg party, I would say a little bigger cups. Now, check this out. Tiferis, listen carefully. Tiferis looks to the tenth sphera and tells Gavura how much to use. I'm going to say that again. Tiferis looks, Tiferet looks at the tenth, which is actually the feet, that's why I'm kind of aiming down now. It looks to the tenth sphera, which is the recipient, and tells how much Gavura to use. I want you guys to try that. Tiferet looks at the recipient, which is really the tenth sphera. And I'm going to tell you what it's called. It's called Malchut. That's the tenth sphere, Malchut. Tiferet looks at the recipient and then tells, in this part, repeat, and tells Gavura how much to employ. So, for example, you guys are now, let's say I'm doing a concert, and you guys are my recipient. You're the crowd, I'm the player. So you're the recipient. So my attribute, I'm going to have an attribute of Tiferet. And it's going to look at your, you guys and say, hmm, these are young, uh, you know, Persians, Russians, descent people. They probably like to rock. Yeah, they don't want to hear some, like, you know, old jazz Frank Sinatra song. They probably want to hear, you know, like, hey, in my brain. What's this rabbi doing on the stage? <laughs> yeah, that's probably what they want to hear. And I see, look at your face, you're all like, yeah, you know. <laughs> So, so that's Tiferet, so I, right? What's Tiferet? Looks at the recipient and tells Gavura basically how much chesed to put out, how, to employ Gavura to limit the, to put the chesed where it belongs. Yeah. Now, if you were a senior citizens, which was my concert last night in New Jersey, <laughs> the mean age was like 107. Yeah, <laughs> my concert. Meanwhile, I mean, I can really rock the house, but I didn't want to cause any cardiac arrests there. But it got cool, though. In the middle of the concert, all of a sudden, my students from Muncie showed up in a giant school bus completely painted for, like, peace in Israel and everything with neon lights and external speakers blasting. And they showed up to my concert. And you know what Nanach people are, the Nanach people? They're all Nanachs. And all my Nanach students showed up to this concert. And the old folks were just like, wow, they're so happy. <laughs> okay, so we already have Chachma, Bina, Das, Chesed, Givur, Tiferes, and Malchus. It leaves us only three. So we're almost there. What's Malchus in the end? It's the end result. For example, I feel like dairy. What kind of dairy do I want? I want yogurt. Okay, has anything happened? No, purely intellectual. But what do I do? I get out of my house, I jump in my car, and I'm heading to a can you name a yogurt place like the Yogurt Land? Yeah, I'm going to Yogurt Land. Yeah? So me driving to Yogurt Land, what attribute is that? No, that's Chesed. Chesed. Okay? And okay, that's Chesed. And Gavur is obviously the brakes and like gotta be careful, stay in my lane, you know. That's all Gavur, stay in the lane. And no swerving. And and then when I get into the ice cream store and I finally, now I'm, I'm licking my yogurt. Yeah, what, what attribute is that? Malchus, malchut. 
Everyone say malchut. It's the final product. So let's go back to God. God says, I want to create a world. What kind of world do I, what kind of world do I want to create? I want to create this kind of world, and that's our Torah. Have you ever heard the Kabbalistic statement that it says in the Zohar? It says, God looked into the Torah and created the world. Because the Torah is called Dat Torah. Dat Torah. Try that. Dat Torah. The, the Torah is called the Dat Torah. That's what God created the world as. The blueprint. You ever heard the term? It's the blueprint of creation. So that's the dot. It's the actual blueprint. And think about it. A guy who says, you know, you know Americans, they like to go up in a mountain. Oh, it's just beautiful. And some guy's like, I say we build. You know, anyone else can enjoy the view, but an American has to build there. So I say we build. And so what does he do? He thinks, like, I want to build a house. Bina, what kind of house do I want to build? Yeah? What kind of house do I want to build? Do I want three stories? Do I want a basement? Do I want a Tudor house? Do I want a Spanish looking house? Do I want an Adobe looking house? Do I want a colonial looking house? What kind of house? That's all Bina. Dot is, I want this kind of house. You get an architect, they make a blueprint. That's our Torah. Our Torah is the blueprint of creation. But unlike a regular blueprint where once you're in the house, like this building had a blueprint. But can you burn the blueprint today and the building will stay standing? Yes, not our Torah. Our Torah is a blueprint that's constantly, when you're learning Torah, the blueprint's constantly creating the world. You're literally creating the world when you learn Torah. Anytime you're studying Torah, it's like a living blueprint that likes fueling the, the world. And, and we have a, a, a statement from our sages that if the whole world would stop learning Torah for one second, like if the whole world stopped, thank God we're all over the planet, so we're always learning. But if the world stopped learning Torah for a second, the whole world would disappear into nothingness. Because this blueprint's alive. You can't get rid of the blueprint. It's so unlike this building where the blueprint's no longer that necessary. You keep a blueprint. By the way, never throw away the blueprint in your house. It can be important. Um, anyway, so, Chesed Givor Tiferet, sorry, Chochma Bina Dat. Chesed Givor Tiferet is the chest area. And I just like, because you guys are young singles, yeah, any of you guys married at this point? Okay, since you're young singles, I just want to mention something. I'm about to give you the greatest, or I already did give you the greatest dating advice ever, ever, okay? You use the 10 spheres for dating. You use it for everything. Chesed means flow, okay? That's what happens in dance clubs. Do the relationships last very long? No, because what is it lacking? What attribute? Gevua, yeah? It's lacking gevua. Tiferet looks at the recipient. If I were meeting you, what's your name? Dan. Dan, I'm Yom Tov. Nice to meet you. Now imagine I just gave him a big hug and a kiss. Yeah, he'd just be like, get away from me. Okay, when you meet someone, you give them some space. You give them some space. What attribute is that? Chesed or Gevura? Gevura. Let a person feel safe with you before you go in for a hug. Yeah, give a person some space. That's chesed, gevura, yeah? Tiferet is who's the recipient? If I'm meeting you for the first time, I want to give you a little space, let you feel safe in your own space, and then as you're feeling safe, so I'm willing to be more close. It's the key to long-term relationships, is having chesed and gevura properly adjusting all the time based on the body language, facial muscles, the movements, the, the uh, what do you call those uh, kind of, that kind of language, it's called, uh, it's nonverbal non cues. You're watching, so people are really good at nonverbal cues, know exactly when you can get closer to somebody. And if you take it that way, you can actually build a relationship forever with a person. Because you take it real slow, and you make sure that you only go to malchus, yeah? Without being too literal what malchus is all about, yeah? But you only go to malchus when everything's in place, and there's been proper, Gevura, which is respect of that person's space. And only when everything's set up and there's a vessel for things can I now really bring the chesed on. And you'll notice that I do a lot of counseling, I'm sure Rabbi Lando does as well, is one of the number one things that I deal with in marriages is they're now married. And the, and the guide says, Rabbi, there's the ring pointing to her finger. There's the ring. Where's her heart? Yeah. You know, he doesn't understand. And she doesn't either. Because we all have this weird, crazy dream 
that when we get married, we're going to finally be able to give ourselves over fully to somebody. But what the brain thinks and what the heart does is two different things. The fact that your brain tells you that once you're married, then you'll get to be able to give all of yourself. The heart's not going to be that trusting. It takes time. It takes time. Because of the imbalance of Chesed, Gevur, and Tiferes, because the imbalance of basically Chesed and Gevura and the, the broken vessels that happen as a result, i.e. broken heart. So it takes a while, even after marriage, to really develop the trust to let yourself go. I'll let you know when I'm there. Okay, and we're married 20 years, and I'm still, I can't say. You know that feeling of just giving yourself over totally to someone? It's a euphoric feeling. You only get it once in your life, yeah. I'm planning on getting there. You know, my wife and I are both guaranteed, like dedicated to get into that vulnerable place. But so far, I, ha I, I just don't, I don't have a GPS system sensitive enough to find the micro doors that slam shut over the years of me not understanding Chesed and Gavura, growing up in LA and Santa Barbara and all the parties and all the scenes and all the relationships that were out of balance. So, so just take it now as a lesson because it's the biggest gift you could ever give your spouse when you finally get married is to have a balance of chesed and gevura. Now, i.e. lots of gevura, in order that you can finally have a chesed that is tiferet, which means beauty, so you can have a relationship that lasts forever. Things that last forever are always in tiferet, and things that are destroyed are always because there was some imbalance between chesed and gevura. The story I just told you, of, Rabbi, there's the ring, where's her heart? What does she have too much of? Gavura, she's too protective. She, her heart doesn't realize she's married yet and safe. She doesn't know she's safe yet. And so she's still so involved in Gavura that she hasn't let the chesed really flow yet. And by the way, I'm using it as uh, that example. It could be easily the guy's doing it. And therefore, boundaries are so important. Also in raising our children. I grew up in pure chesed. You heard about my background. Was that chesed or Gavura? What do you think is my biggest challenge as a father of eight? Gavur. It's my biggest challenge in my marriage, in my, my family life, in my raising my children. Yeah. When my kid says, you know, do you think I should try this little rocket-powered suit I developed? And I'm like, for sure. <laughs> 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 my wife's like, honey, that's really dangerous. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just so... Chesed oriented. Yeah. You heard uh, my son uh, Avrami was arrested in, in England. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I didn't even hear it. You knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. So my son was arrested yesterday in England. On, he, uh, he carries mace in Israel because it's perfectly fine to carry mace in Israel. And he's a kind of guy, he's a like, self protection guy. So he carries mace. That's his gun until he's old enough to carry one. Uh, but he studies in Europe, and he forgot and brought his mace to Europe by accident. Now, mace is illegal in England. And so he went through custom. They looked through his bag and found a bottle of mace. And so he just got turned around and sent back to Israel. Poor kid. And I think he's done. I think he got blacklisted. And I'm so happy. Because I don't want my son... We moved, I made Aliyah. I don't want my son living in Europe. He's been studying in Europe for a couple years. He's a big Torah scholar, and he's been studying in Belgium. Belgium stan. Anyway, um, back to our business. I was doing the night, 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 dialing anything my radio advised. With every single one of those late night stations playing songs, bringing tears to my eyes. I was seriously thinking about hiding my receiver when the switch broke us its old. You know they say that they are then out of control. Radio, it's a sound sound. Radio, it's cleaning up the nation. But they 
don't give you any choice Cause you think that it's treason Well, you had better do what you were told You better listen to the radio I want to bite the hand that feeds me I want to bite that hand so badly I want to make them wish they never seen me Some of my friends sit around every evening And they worry about the times ahead But everybody else is overwhelmed by indifference And the promise of an early bed They either shut up or get cut out They don't want to think about it The inches of the real to real And the innocent is in the hands Of such a lot of fools I miss the step Chatting is to say Chatting And that's the ties And that's the ties The way that you feel Radio, it's a sound salvation Radio, it's cleaning up the nation They say it better What's that? But they don't give you any choice Cause they think that it's treason Well you had better do what you were told You better listen to the radio Radio, radio Radio, radio Radio, radio That was totally not too Ferris to play that song to a bunch of people who probably never heard an Elvis Costello song in their life. You ever heard of Elvis Costello? Everyone knows one song. I don't even know it. How's it go? Nah, no one knows that. You know. That song? No, you don't know it. This is mostly she knows it. Great song, isn't it? Anyway, so listen up. You can see how chesed I am. Like, there's no good Like, I'm going all over the place. Okay. But in the end, you're gonna get all ten spheres. We're almost there. Okay. Chochma, bina, das, chesed's flow, gevura's limitation. Yeah. T Ferris is getting the right combination. How? You look at who's the recipient. You employ the right amount of gavura for the, for the ex relationship to last, for it to be beautiful. And that's why the music, right? I'm going to hit the right chords, right volume for the recipient. Next, last three. Ready? Last three are netzach. Say the word netzach. 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 It means, it means perseverance, the ability to last long time, meaning it's the same as chesed. Netzach's the right leg. I'm going to point to my left leg, though. Netzach is the right leg, yeah? Which is just like, meaning I can flow, I can go to go buy yogurt, yeah? So now I'm driving down the street. The problem is I get to the yogurt store and they're under, re, they're under remodel. It's not what I'm going to do, yeah? So turn around, go home. What, what, if, what if someone with the attribute of Netzach, he's going to go find another branch. He's immediately Google, you know, where's another place where I can get this stuff? And he's going to go find it. Netzach's perseverance. Okay? A marathon runner, a sprinter, he doesn't need netzach. A marathon runner needs netzach. He's got to keep going. Okay? Netzach, perseverance, it's the, the, the continuation of the chesed. Okay? So, for example, I always tell people get married. I said, I'm very happy for you got married, but us rabbis, we celebrate anniversaries. We don't celebrate marriage. To get married, all you need is a pulse. Anniversaries are re what real people are made of. Yeah? What attribute is anniversaries? That's netzach. Yeah, getting married is more of a chesed thing. Anniversaries are netzach, just hanging in there. Yeah, how long are you married now, Sam? 21 years. Sam, we just had our 20th. Where are you guys holding? 10. 10. Great. And you'll notice, like, people, people hang in there in our circles. Yeah, people are built to last. Yeah, <laughs> built to last. A lot of netzach. A lot of netzach. So, 
Um, Netzach is the fact that I still serve. There's no reason I should still serve. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But I still serve. It's just, I do something I think it's cool. I like it. I stick with it. Yeah. I grew up in like crazy music world. Yeah, my brother's still in the crazy music. How many concerts do you think you see a month? <laughs> Yeah, imagine how many concerts you see a year. Probably more than anyone you know. Once a week, good show. Yeah, once a week, okay. I think he goes more than that. Um, <laughs> it seems like every single time I call you, you're on your way back from some crazy show you went to. And he goes by himself most of the time. Because how Maybe can you? Go. <laughs> <laughs> he would love to go with somebody. He's just no one's willing to go hear that much live music. Anyway, but Netzach is the fact that I still have in my car, I have 11 speakers, two amplifiers, and it's like busting with music, like busting with music in my car. Because I'm still totally into it. I'm still totally into my sermon. I'm still totally into my beer. I'm still totally into my mountain bike. Yeah? Netzach. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm gonna, not going to stop. I'm not stopping, man. Netzach. Okay? My Judaism. Got turned on Judaism. 23 years old. I never looked back. Okay? My first Shabbos I kept by accident. There was no such thing as, in, there wasn't even internet. Email, forget about it. Facebook, it was a, in the glimmer of someone's eyes. It was nothing, nothing. There was no cell phones on the planet unless you're like in the army, okay? So how do I break Shabbos? Smoking, I didn't smoke, yeah? Healthy man, don't smoke, yeah? So I didn't smoke. So how do I break Shabbos? Light switches? Someone had taped the light switches, okay? I was in Israel, my first trip to Israel after Santa Barbara which actually he's the one who sent me to Jerusalem. Sam sent me to Jerusalem. And um, the light switch were taped, so I kept my first Shabbos by accident. Netzach. Netzach is perseverance. The next one is the, right le the left leg, and that's hod. Okay, everyone say the word hod? Hod. Hod means focus, okay? Staying focused, something I have almost none of, okay? <laughs> I have like no hod, okay? Hode is focus. So, Netzach, you're going to keep going, but Hode is you're going to keep going on the subject matter. Yeah, you're going to actually be doing the same thing, you know. So, so Hode is just that focus. For example, I'll tell you, the, what's not Hode is a man in a hardware store. Okay? He's like, I think I need a Phillips screwdriver. Let me just step into Home Depot. Hode is fidelity in a relationship. That's Hode. Hode's staying true to your spouse. Okay? That much I do, okay? So, hode is just staying with the program. Hode staying at a job for a long time. Netsock staying with anything for a long time. Hode staying in that job. Staying loyal to the company that you're working for. Okay, that's all attribute of hode. Clear? And do you see how it's gavura oriented? Remember, gavura is limitation. So, hode's also, it's a limitation, staying focused. A uh, good example of Netzach as far as distance would be a, a searchlight. You ever seen searchlights shooting up into the sky? But they're going wider and wider and wider as they go like a flashlight. Tell me, what kind of light would be a hode light? Laser. Laser beams. Yeah, it goes long distance, but it stays perfectly focused. It's fo it's, somehow it's like focusing in on itself as it, as it expands out. It doesn't expand. It expands forward, but not out. Okay? That's the attribute of hode. So remember laser beam for hode. Okay, and you think about it, when you think of an Air Force pilot, yeah, he's going to be like laser beam with his focus in his work. Clear? Okay, that's hode. Okay, let's say the word hode again. Hode. And now the penultimate, sphera. We've already done the ultimate. We did it, Malchus. So the penultimate sphera is, you guys know the word penultimate? Second to last. Okay, try that word. You get a little vocabulary. Penultimate. You can use it, it makes you sound smart, and no one ever knows what you're saying, okay? <laughs> penultimate. The penultimate sphera is yisod. Everyone say the word yisod. Yisod, yisod is the penultimate. That's going to be our last that we have to do here. And yisod is connection. It's like a USB cable. USB cable. So, like, for example, if you have some kind of device that's got so much going on, you know, like if my, my phone. Here, where's my phone? Anyway, my phone, I think it's in my coat, but, the, but your phone, like if you think an iPhone or a Galaxy or whatever, it's got so much happening. Yeah, there's Chesed, there's Gabor, there's Teferis, there's Netz, Ohod, everything's in there. But I need to now download stuff into my computer, so there's different ways of doing it. They're all you sewed. If I want to Bluetooth it in, if I want to uh, Wi-Fi it in the network, 
or I want to just grab that USB cable and just you know, hardwire it straight to my computer. But that's ESOT. Okay? So for example, this was made of concrete over here. So they're going to be pouring it off those. You ever seen those cranes that pour concrete? Yeah? So there, but there's always a guy in there. You know, his name's probably Miguel or something. And he's like, he's like holding this thing you know, to make sure it's between the two slats to fill the wall with cement. Okay, that's, that's ESOT. Okay, that's ESOT. That's the, the uh, ninth attribute, and that's the, I'm not going to point to that one, that's the genital regions. Okay, that's that part of the body. Okay, so we have, we have in the brain, we got Chochmah, Bina, Dat, yeah? Chesed, Gevur, Tiferes, Netzach, Hod, Yisod's the center part, and that's connection, that's the USB cable connection of everything going on with you, connecting it into Malchus, which is the final recipient, okay, which is called the feminine. Okay, and that's why there's so much illusion of male and female in, um, in Judaism, in the Kabbalah, the Song of Songs. Kabbalat Shabbat is all the bride and the groom. God's the groom, we're the bride. Okay, we're the feminine. And the feminine is that last attribute, is Malchut, is the feminine. And the upper six, Chesegvur Tiferes, Netzach Hod Yisod, are the six, that's the masculine energy. Those six are the masculine energy. By no coincidence, they are the Vav. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav. If you look at a Vav, it connects heaven to earth. It's, a, it's that symbol of the, of the male body. Okay, that's a Vav. Connects heaven to earth. It connects all the ideas, connects the relationship. It's the, it's the, the, the consummation of connection of everything we've discussed. Is Yisod. Yeah, of male into female. Okay, and that's those six attributes connecting to Malchus. So this relates to absolutely everything you'll ever deal with in your life. The more you understand this stuff, the smoother your life will go. And what you now have gotten, and we're, we're, I'm going to do a quick review where we'll say them all, all ten again. What you now have gotten is the key to life. It is the key to everything. It's called the tree of life, actually. In Kabbalah, it's called the tree of life. And the more you get it wired, you see the face of God. Remember how I said the face of God? Because God doesn't have a face, doesn't have an image. But... Nevertheless, this is how God creates creation. So the more I understand how God creates creation, the more I understand how God wants at least me to relate to him. Just like through my face you'll relate to me, this is, but you're not, that's not me. My face isn't me. My face is my face. There's a me that's an essence. So to God has an essence, we'll never know it, we'll never understand it. But God has chosen these ten attributes of how to create the world and how to relate to God. And you can relate to God via all ten Spheros. When I'm thinking in Kabbalah and like tripping out on God, that's Chachma. When I'm studying Talmud, which is the analysis, analysis of all of the laws of the Torah, that I'm using my being attribute to relate to God. When I'm studying Jewish law, which is like, this is what you do. Because in the Talmud, it's like open-ended. Everyone's arguing about what the law is. But you never know what to do. But when you study the Shulchan Aruch, which is the actual code of law, that's Dat. That's what to do. Okay, and so I'm, I'm connecting to God when I study dot. Okay, chesed is when I'm flowing, I'm throwing my sukkah parties, yeah, or I'm making a kiddish. Yeah, you imagine when I make kiddish, there's not a lot of wine left in the cup when I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> it's a total chesed, you know, and I'm serving God with all my attribute of chesed. Yeah, but before I'm a parent, I'm a father. I do not send my kids in rocket suits up to heaven. Yeah, I. I'm, I'm involved in Gavur, I believe, with eight kids all the way down that line. They're two years apart, all the way down till four years old. There's a lot of Gavur going on. Yeah, they got to watch out. Yeah. Not that I would ever harm the kid, but you, know, you want monsters on your hand? Raise them like my parents raised me. Yeah. Okay, you, can be a, you can create a real monster with no Gavur. In, in LA, oh my gosh, I, we just passed a teenager. Kid looked like he was about 12, driving the nicest Porsche career you could ever see. You know, and I, I finally pulled him next. I wanted to see. I was following him because he was just racing through traffic. I wanted to get here on time. And I was, finally pulled up next to the kid. Looked like he was, you know, three years old. You know, this little kid driving this Porsche car. He was just like, <laughs> you know, and I don't know what his parents are thinking, but it's just a pure chesed upbringing and no gavur. And you know what? You know, what's going to happen when he slams that thing into a wall? They're going to buy him a new one, ain't they? Yeah? If he's alive, yeah, they'll buy him a new one. So anyway, so when I do that, I'm serving God with Gavura. 
when I'm keeping halacha, what does it mean to keep halacha? I want to do this, I want to do that. I want to eat this burger. Oh, but, but we don't know, you know, it, it, the grill it was on, someone just made, someone just made a grilled cheese sandwich on that grill. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, man, I'm pretty sure it looked like grilled cheese sandwich. I'm like, you positive? You know, because I already made the burger. I just want to eat that thing, yeah? But when I keep that law, what attribute am I serving God with? Gavura. It's Gavura. No, it's not eating. Yeah, it's not worth it. I'm, I'm going to serve God with Gavura. I'm not going to eat it. And then when I, when I, with the attribute of Tiferis, yeah, is to make, to make, I don't just make Kiddush in a Dixie cup, man. I make $150 silver gorgeous goblet. Yeah, it's a gorgeous goblet. And that's Tiferis, beauty. I'm going to serve God with beauty. I mean, because think about it. Like that's, it's not just molten metal either. It's got design. It's, it's got, it, it was chesed and gavur, totally mating to become this incredible kiddush cup. And I'm going to do kiddush in that thing. I'm going to light Hanukkah, the most gorgeous menorah. I'm going to serve God with Tiferis. When I crank my stereo, it's not some rap music with, you know, on my car stereo. You know, I'm not going to serve God with some garbage music. I serve God with like awesome, awesome tunes that bring like, you know, spirituality and closeness to God. It's Tiferes. Netzach, I'm not just keeping Shabbos that one by accident and the next one I kept on purpose. I'm going to keep Shabbos till the day I die. Netzach. I'm not going to stop doing that. It's the beauty, it's the key to everything, Shabbos. I'm doing it forever. Netzach. I'm going to serve God with Netzach. Yeah? And I'm going to, and hold. Staying focused, staying, f staying connected to my spouse, staying focused on my, on my goals at hand, staying focused on my, on my business and making sure I don't, I'm not overly exposed in the business. You know, I'm running a business, you got to check exposure all the time and, you know, it costs money too to deal with exposure. And hold, staying focused. And I'm going to serve God with hold by staying focused on God. Because we all know when things are going tough and we're struggling, we forget about God. And so someone who can recognize God, not just when it's going well, but also when it's going bad, to recognize that it's all from God. And it's all part of some story we're in. It's called history. It's your personal history. His story. It's his story of your life. You're living, li you're living God's story. And so Hode is staying focused that God is, you know, behind the scenes. He's pulling the puppet strings. There's no accidents. There's no coincidences. I'm not some victim of some stupid circumstance. This is all building me because I'm always focused that this is coming from God, and that's hode. And you sowed. You sowed is connection. Power. Where am I at the what time? Am I in the right place at the right time? Like, where am I? Is, is it all going to connect in the end? Am I going to be able to consummate my dream with reality? And I can serve God with you sowed. By, by recognizing that always that God is, is what's causing everything around me. Everything around me is all from God. And so that's the, because think about it, what is the USB cable of interface? The USB interface between God and creation. And the answer is right here, right now, being present in the moment. Like every New Age speaker will tell you, just be in the moment. Yeah? That's Yisod. It's just totally in the moment. And that's my Rebbe, the Rebbe, you're the, a spiritual leader. I spoke about my Rebbe. You asked about my Rebbe. This nice lady over here asked about my Rebbe. So he's the attribute of Yisod. All the Rebbe's are Yisod. Just connect. Connect you. Connect. Staying connected. They're in the moment. And, and then finally, Malchus is, is the physical, you know, it's whatever. Malchus is all the end result. You know, the guy created the guitar, so the guitar is Malchus. Eating the yogurt's Malchus. For our physical world, that's Malchus. So everything you do in this physical world to, to sanctify God's name, everything you do in this world to sanctify God's name is ultimately malchus. And let's just bring up, the, remember malchus, the kingship, the final one, final actress, that's the feet, is the feminine. That's the feminine. So anything you do in this physical world, which is the feminine, the physical world is the feminine. The final physical world is the feminine. And everything you do to connect the feminine world, meaning the physical world, to God, i.e., take your bucks and make a gorgeous Shabbos table. Take your money and put your kids through Torah school. Take your money 
and buy a beautiful gift to someone who, you know, meaning in honor of the Holy Shabbos or something. You're doing the physical world to connect the female physical world to the masculine uh, flow of the upper spheros, yeah? Everything you do to connect it, the physical, and I'm now going to connect it on this guitar for all of us, yeah? And, which is called Kiddush Hashem, sanctifying God's name through the world, through physical world. That's called Malchus. Okay, so let's review them all real quick. Chachma. Chachma. Point with me so you'll get it. I want you guys to get alive here. Okay, you ready? Chachma. Chachma. Let's start from your brain. Chachma. Chachma. It's to the right. You're going to the right? No, no, you, sh you should go to your... Is that your right? Yeah. Again, Chachma. Chachma. Bina. Bina. Das. das. Okay, remember what those are? Associative, analytical, and decisive. Okay? Okay, flow. Chesed. Chesed. Givura. Tiferes. Okay, Tiferes. Okay? Netzach. Netzach. Hod. Hod. We're not going to point to the Yisod. Okay? And Stomp. Malchus. That's, okay, that's this world, physical world. Okay? And that's the end result of anything you do is called Malchus. In the end of, because you think anything you'll do in your life, Dan, was, yeah. anything you'll do in your life, Dan, will always have all ten. Because the whole world's made of all ten. No matter where you look in this room, no matter what you'll do with your life, every endeavor, every, every dream that you want to somehow uh, concretize will always be going through all ten of those attributes. And the more you get to know them, the more you'll, you will master this world, the more you'll understand the face of God, and the more success you'll have. So I bless you all to, to have all that. And we'll say amen. And uh, we'll end with a little song. Guess who's older? Which one? Me? No. I look older because I've been staring into the sun way longer, I think. I stare at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Start with a blue solo in E. Ready? I'll play rhythm. I just do a little solo. Okay. Nice. Oh, I got one. Let's do Hineni, because there so many any of people of Russian descent originally? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. I wrote this for uh, my Russian friends who came over in 1990, right after the curtain fell. Um, felt like it was the first time Americans could really say that we accomplished anything because we were so excited about helping Soviet Jewry. And so I was asked to write a song for Capitol Records to help raise funds for uh, resettlement in the United States and Israel. And uh, this was the song.
I wasn't there When you led the Maccabees I wasn't there When Esther took the stand In every age We've got to make a choice Rise up and take a stand Or ignore the outstretched hand Take it Try the words hineni. Hineni means means here I am. Come on. Hineni. Here you go. Come on. Don't be shy. This is LA. Hineni. I wasn't there on the eve of Kristallnacht. I wasn't there when they packed the trains. Millions were crying Did nobody hear the voice? I wasn't there But I feel the pain I wasn't there when Moses freed the slaves. In every age, we've got to make a choice to rise up and take a stand or ignore the outstretched hand. First to say, get ready. Gonna be the one who is the first to say, he named me. Nice. He named me. 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 One more time. Thank you very much, everybody. Amazing. So if, if you want to follow it up at all, uh, there's a couple things. Uh, number one is you can check out any of my brothers. It's amazing. SamGlazer.com. Just go on there, SamGlazer.com. My stuff's also on iTunes, Yom Tov Glazer. And uh, I have classes all over line, and they're much more focused, by the way. So <laughs> They're not as crazy as this one was. But there's something about when I come out of surfing, I, like, my brain's like spilling out all over the Pacific. So, the, um, anyway, but the, you can check it out online. Lots of YouTube videos. Uh, probably my most uh, traveled website for my classes 
It's called TorahAnytime.com. Just look up my name on TorahAnytime.com. I've got about 20 titles that are uh, really very special classes. But YouTube's got a ton of stuff. Um, you can come to Israel to study with me. Please, God, we'll be together there. But also, people fly in all the time to learn with me. Uh, some learn one-on-one -on -one in an executive center. And, uh, but otherwise, people who come who aren't rich or famous will come and study with me. I teach co-ed every single day overlooking the Western Wall at Asia Tor Jerusalem. Um, my seminars uh, are going on all the time there. Uh, it's the possibly.org. Possibly.org, and check out about that. Um, other than that, uh, rockin'. It was amazing meeting you guys. You're beautiful people. Keep up the good work.